Today, I will be making cinnamon buns. Cinnamon buns have a complicated structure and can be easily altered by different components throughout the baking process. Let's begin with the ingredients. To create the cinnamon bun dough, I used one cup of milk, two and a half teaspoons of yeast, a half a cup of white sugar, one third a cup of room temperature butter, a teaspoon of salt, two eggs, and four cups of flour. To make the filling, I used one cup of packed brown sugar, a third a cup of room temperature butter, and three tablespoons of cinnamon. To make the frosting, I used eight ounces of cream cheese, a half a stick of butter, and a half a cup of powdered sugar. To begin, I used one cup of warm milk. I heated the milk in the microwave for 30 seconds, which is a physical change. I then added one packet or two and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast to the milk mixture. Yeast activates at 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Some bakers add sugar to their yeast mixture when using water instead of milk. I used warm milk because it contains natural sugars such as lactose, which can support a growth of yeast without added table sugar or sucrose. I then added the yeast mixture to a half a cup of white sugar, a third a cup of room temperature butter, and one teaspoon of salt. This process is called fermentation. Yeast is a living, single-celled organism that is classified under the fungus kingdom. It feeds off of simple sugars, breaking them down into carbon dioxide and alcohol. Carbon dioxide is released as the yeast feeds off of simple sugars. In other words, yeast eats sugar and gives off alcohol and carbon dioxide. I am now adding four cups of flour and two eggs. Gluten is formed from flour when water or a substance containing water, like milk, is added. All-purpose flour contains two proteins necessary to form gluten, glutenine and gliadine. When water or milk is added to these two proteins, they link together, forming gluten. I am now mixing all of these ingredients together, and I'm going to knead the dough until everything is incorporated and visible clumps are mixed in. It would have been easier for me to use my KitchenAid mixer, but when using a mixer, it is much easier to overwork your dough. Overworked dough will feel tight and tough, meaning the gluten molecules have become damaged. It will not stretch, but will break when you try to roll or pull it. Underworked dough will not rise as much in the oven and will have a dense texture. The gluten molecules in the dough are underdeveloped when not kneaded enough. I found that kneading my dough by hand for 10 minutes was the perfect amount of kneading time. Once kneaded, I put the dough back into the bowl and covered it with a towel and placed it in an unpreheated oven. The dough needs to be proof for an hour in a tight, warm place. This helps with fermentation so that carbon dioxide is trapped as tiny pockets of air within the dough, which will cause the dough to rise. After an hour of proofing, I made my filling. I added one cup of brown sugar and a third a cup of room temperature butter to the bowl. I found that the butter was too hard to mix and microwaved the mixture for 30 seconds. After microwaving, I added about three tablespoons of cinnamon to the mixture. I took my dough out of the oven and punched the now risen dough down. Punching down the dough releases any gas bubbles that have formed during rising and also redistributes the yeast, sugar, and moisture within the dough. I rolled the dough to my desired thickness. I then spread the cinnamon sugar mixture over the rolled out dough and rolled it until it formed a log shape. Using a knife to cut the cinnamon rolls usually messes up the swirl, so instead I used rope to create my incisions. The results were very clear swirls. After filling and cutting my dough, I proofed for a second time in the oven. After filling and cutting my dough, I proofed for a second time in the oven for 30 more minutes. Proofing gives the yeast time to grow, which gives the bread a nice texture and flavor. It also changes the fibers within the dough. As seen in the video, the cinnamon rolls had risen after the 30 minutes. I preheated the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and once the oven was ready, I put the pans into the oven. 
As the cinnamon rolls bake, the carbon dioxide within the bread will release and cause the dough to rise. The ethanol created with the yeast mixture will begin to evaporate, transforming into gas bubbles that will contribute to the bread rising in the oven. I set the timer for 25 minutes, but pulled them out of the oven at the 20 minute mark. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. As the cinnamon rolls began to cool, I made the frosting. I added 8 ounces of cream cheese and a half a stick of butter to a bowl and microwaved that for 30 seconds to soften both ingredients. Once microwaved, I then added a half a cup of powdered sugar and mixed it all together. I used a brush to distribute the frosting over the cinnamon buns as they were hot. The butter in the frosting will melt once it touches heat. The butter will seep into the dough and create a buttery, delicious pastry. Once all of the cinnamon buns were covered, I gave some to my family to try. They approved, and so did I. The chemistry behind cinnamon buns was more compl complicated than I anticipated it to be, but I found this experience to be fulfilling and tasty. Scrumptious. <laughs> this is scrumptious.